Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Zodiac Bandit, and today we're going to be doing another Critical Role death battle. Today is Marisha's characters, so Keyleth, Bo, and Ladna, and much like last time, there's going to be two fights, a practical fight and a theoretical fight. We always go over the uh, health, AC, speed, and abilities of the characters before we break down the theoretical fight, and then we go into the practical fight, and of course the practical fight always has a few rules as we go into it, but we'll get to that when we get there. First, we're going to start with Keyleth's AC, HP, and speed and then her abilities. Let's go. Keyleth at level 10 has 71 HP, 17 AC, and a speed of 30, but she also has her Earth Elemental form, which we will be going over, and that has 126 HP, 17 AC, and 30 speed, a combined total of 197 HP. Now we're going to go over her chance of hitting. Keyleth has a plus 10 with her Thorn Whip, which means she has a 50% chance to hit Bo, and she has an 85% chance to hit Ladna. Or in her Elemental form, she has a 8, or a plus 8, using slam and she has a 40% chance to hit bow in this form and a 75% chance to hit Ladna. Now we're moving on to Keyleth's abilities. Obviously she has spell casting. At 10th level she has four cantrips, four first level spell slots, three second, third, and fourth level spell slots, and two fifth level spell slots. Uh, her spell casting modifier is plus six and her spell save DC is 18. Her attack bonus is plus 10 for spell attacks. She also gains wild shape at second level. Uh, we all know what wild shape is, but you can use your action to magically assume the shape of a beast that you have seen before. You can use this feature twice. You regain expended uses of this once you finish a short or long rest. Your druid level determines the beast you can transform into, uh, as shown on the beast shape table. At second level, for example, you can transform into any beast that has a challenge rating of one quarter or lower. That doesn't have to be flying or swimming speed. Also at second level, she gained access to a druid circle. She chose circle of the moon. Combat Wild Shape, when you choose this ability at second level, you gain the ability to use Wild Shape on your turn as a bonus action rather as an action. Additionally, when you are transformed, you can use your bonus action to expend a spell slot to regain 1d8 hit points per level of the expended spell slot. Circle Forms, the rights of your circle grant you the ability to transform into more dangerous animals. Starting at second level, you can use your Wild Shape to transform into beasts of a challenge rating as high as 1, you can ignore the max CR column of the beast shape table. You must abide by the other limitations there. Uh, starting at 6th level, you can transform into beasts with a challenge rating as, as high as your druid level divided by 3. Rounded down. She also gets Primal Strike. Starting at 6th level, your attacks in beast form count as magical for the purposes of overcoming resistances and immunities to non-magical uh, attacking damage. And at level 10, she gets Elemental Wild Shape. She can expend two uses of Wild Shape at the same time to transform into an Air Elemental, Earth Elemental, Fire Elemental, or Water Elemental. She most commonly uses the Earth Elemental, and it seems to be what Matt uses for her currently. So that's the one we're going to roll with today, which is why I picked that earlier. Now we're moving on to Bo. Bo has 85 HP, 20 AC, and 50 speed, which is insanely fast. Her chance of hitting, she has a plus 9 with her unarmed strikes and her bow staff and a plus 10 with the Maelstrom Gloves. She has a 45 to 50% chance to hit Keyleth, depending on what weapon she uses, and she has a 70 to 75% chance to hit Ladna. Abilities, she took the Sentinel feat. Uh, when you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, the creature speed becomes zero for the rest of their turn. A creature provokes opportunity attacks from you even if they take the disengage action before leaving your reach. When a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against a target other than you, and that target doesn't have to have this feat, you can use your reaction to make a melee attack against the creature attacking. At first level, she also gets the martial arts ability. Your practice of the martial arts gives you mastery of combat styles uh, that use unarmed strikes and monk weapons, which are short swords and any simple melee weapons that don't have the two-handed or the heavy property. You gain the following benefits while you are unarmed or wielding only monk weapons that uh, when you aren't wearing armor or wielding a shield. You can use Dexterity instead of Strength for attacks and damage rolls that use unarmed strikes or, or monk weapons. You can roll a d4 in place of the normal damage of your unarmed strike or monk weapon. This die changes as you gain monk levels, as shown in the martial arts column of the monk table. When you use an action with an unarmed strike or, or a monk weapon on your turn, you can make a one unarmed strike as a bonus action for example if you take the action or the attack action and attack with a quarter staff you can also make an unarmed strike as a bonus action assuming you haven't already 
taking a bonus action this turn. Starting at second level, Bo has access to Key. Your training allows you to harness the mystic energy of Key. Your access to this energy is represented by a number of Key points. Your monk level determines the number of Key points you have as shown on the Key Points column of the monk table. You can spend these Key Points to fuel various Key features. You start knowing three such features, Fury of Blows, sorry, Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step with the Wind. You learn more key features as you gain levels in this class. When you spend a key point, it is unavailable until you finish a short or long rest, at the end of which you draw all your expended key points uh, back into yourself. You must spend at least 30 minutes of uh, rest meditating to regain these key points. Some of your key features require you to make, or your target to make a saving throw to resist the features of the effect. The saving throw DC is calculated as follows. DC is 8 plus your proficiency modifier plus your wisdom. Hers is 15. And going over the abilities that she has access to. Flurry of Blows. Immediately after you take an attack action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Patient Defense. You can spend one key point to take a dodge action as a bonus action on your turn. And Step of the Wind. You can spend one key point to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action on your turn. And your uh, jump distance is doubled for the rest of the turn. And at second level you get unarmored movement. You get plus 10 to your speed when not wielding a shield or wearing armor. And this increases as you level up. Uh, as shown in the monk table. At ninth level you gain the ability to move along vertical surfaces and across liquids on your turn without falling during the move. Uh, monastic tradition. Am I saying that right? I think it's monastic. Monastic. Anyway, Way of the Cobalt Soul, Extract Aspects. Starting at 3rd level, you can strike pressure points uh, to gain crucial information about your foe. When you hit a creature with one of the attacks granted by Flurry of Blows, you can analyze it. Whenever an analyzed creature misses you with an attack, you can immediately use your reaction to make an unarmed strike against that creature if it's within your reach. This benefit lasts until, you're, uh, until you finish a short or long rest. Additionally... When you analyze a creature, you learn all of its damage vulnerabilities, damage resistances, damage immunities, and condition immunities. Deflect missiles. Starting at third level, you can use your reaction to deflect or catch the missile uh, when you are hit by a ranged attack. When you do so, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk level. If you reduce the damage to zero, you can catch the missile if it is small enough for you to hold in one hand. And you have at least one free hand. If you catch the missile in this way, you can spend one key point to make a ranged attack uh, with a range of 20 to 60, which means outside of 20 feet it's a disadvantage, outside of 60 feet it won't hit. Using the weapon or the uh, piece of ammunition you just caught as a part of the same reaction, you can make an attack with proficiency regardless of the weapon's proficiencies and the missile counts as a monk weapon for the attack. At 4th level, she gains access to Slow Fall. You can use your reaction when you fall to reduce any falling damage you take by the amount equal to 5 times your monk level. At 5th level, she gets Extra Attack. At 5th level, she gets Stunning Strike. You can interfere with the flow of key in your opponent's body. When you hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, you can spend 1 key point to attempt to a Stunning Strike. The target must succeed on a Constitution Saving Throw or be stunned until the end of your next turn. At level 6, she gets key empowered strikes. Your unarmed strikes count as magical for the purposes of overcoming uh, resistance and immunities to non-magical attacks and damage. At 7th level, she gets evasion. Your agility lets you dodge uh, out of the way of certain area effects, such as a blue dragon's lightning breath or a fireball spell. When you are subject to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw, to take only half damage, you can instead take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw, and only half if you fail. At 7th level, she gets Stillness of the Mind. You can use your action to end the effect on yourself that is causing you to be charmed or frightened. At level 10, she gets Purity of the Body. Your mastery of key flowing through you makes you immune to disease and poisons. We're now moving on to Laudna. At 10th level, 7th level Sorcerer, 3rd level Monk. She has... 89 HP, 14 AC, and 30 speed. Chance of hitting, she has a plus 8 to hit with Eldritch Blast. And she has a 50% chance to hit Keyleth, and a 40% chance to hit Bow. 
So she has a lot of abilities as she's a multi-class and she also picked up some feats. So bear with me. There's a bit here. Spell Sniper. You have learned techniques to enhance your attacks with certain kinds of uh, spells. Gaining the following benefits. When you cast a spell that requires you to make an attack roll, the spell range is doubled. That's fucking cracked. Uh, your spell range attacks ignore half cover and three quarter cover. Uh, you learn one cantrip that requires an attack roll. Uh, choose the cantrips from the Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard list. Your spellcasting ability for this uh, cantrip depends on the spellcasting list you choose from. Charisma for Bard, Sorcerer, Warlock, Wisdom for Cleric and Druid, and Intelligence for Wizard. Unsettling Presence. As an action, you can unsettle a creature you can see within 15 feet of you. The target has disadvantage on the, uh, the next saving throw it makes within the next minute. Constructs, undead, and creatures that can't be frightened are immune to this feature. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Moving on to her sorcerer abilities, she has spellcasting. She gains access uh, to spellcasting through her sorcerer class. At 7th level sorcerer, she has 5 cantrips, 4 first level spell slots, 3 second and third level spell slots, and 1 fourth level spell slot. Her spellcasting ability is her charisma mod, so plus 4, and her spell save DC is 16, and her spell... Uh, attack bonus is plus eight her sorceress origin shadow magic eyes of the dark from first level you have dark vision with 120 feet range when you reach a third level in this class you learn the darkness spell which doesn't count against your sorceress spell as known in addition you can cast it by spe spending two sorcery points or by expending a spell slot if you cast the source uh if you cast it with a sorcery point you can see through the darkness created by the spell. Strength of the Grave. Starting at first level, your existence is in a twilight state between life and death. Makes you difficult to defeat. When damage reduces you to zero hit points, you can make a charisma saving throw DC 5 uh, plus the uh, damage taken. On a success, you instead drop to one hit point. You can't use this feature if you are reduced to zero hit points by radiant damage or by a critical hit. After the saving throw succeeds, you can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. Font Magic. At second level, you tap into deep wellspring of magic within yourself. This wellspring is represented by sorcery points, which allow you to create a variety of magical effects. Sorcery points. You have two sorcery points, and you gain more as you reach higher levels, as shown by the sorcery points column of the sorcerer table. You can never have more sorcery points than shown on the table of your level. You regain all sorcery points uh, when you finish a long rest. Flexible casting. You can use your sorcery points to gain additional spell slots or sacrifice spell slots to gain additional sorcery points. You learn other ways uh, to use your sorcery points as you reach higher levels. Creating spell slots. You can transform unexpended uh, sorcery points into one spell slot as a bonus action on your turn. The creating spell slot table shows the cost of creating a spell slot given of any level you create you can create spell slots no higher than any fifth level any spell slot you create with this feature vanishes when you finish a long rest converting spell slots to sorcery points as a bonus action on your turn you can expend one spell slot and gain a number of sorcery points equal to the spell slots level at third level, she gains access to meta magic. You gain the ability to twist your spells to suit your needs. You gain two of the following meta magic options of your choice. She picked twin spell when you cast a spell that targets only one creature and doesn't have a range of self. You can spend a number of sorcery points equal to the spell's level to target a second creature in range with the same spell. One sorcery point if the cast or if the spell is a cantrip. To be eligible, a spell must be incapable of targeting more than one creature at the spell's current level for example magic missile and scorching ray are not eligible but ray of frost and chromatic orb are she also picked quicken spell when you cast a spell that has a casting time of one action you can spend two sorcery points to change the casting time to one bonus action which is fucking insane hound of ill omen starting at sixth level you gain the ability to call forth a howling creature of darkness to harass your foes as a bonus action you can spend three sorcery points to summon a hound of ill omen to target one creature you can see within 120 feet of you the hound gains the direwolf stats block and gains the following changes the hound size is medium not large it counts as a monstrosity not a beast 
It appears with a number of temporary hit points equal to half your sorcery level. It can move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. The Hound takes 5 force damage if it ends its turn inside an object. At the start of its turn, the Hound automatically knows uh, its target's location. If the target was hidden, it is no longer hidden for, uh, from the Hound. The Hound appears in an unoccupied space chosen by you within 30 feet of the target. Uh, roll initiative for the Hound. On its turn, it can only move towards its target uh, by the most direct route. And it can use its action only to attack its target. The Hound can make opportunity attacks, but only against its target. Additionally, while the Hound is within 5 feet of the target, the target has disadvantage on saving throws against any spell you cast. The Hound disappears if it is reduced to 0 hit points, if the target is reduced to hero's hit points, or if 5 minutes pass. Moving on to her Warlock abilities, she gets Pack Magic at level 1 for Warlock. At level 3 Warlock, she has 2 cantrips and 2 second level spell slots. Her spell casting ability and bonus and DC is the same as Sorcerer as they are all uh, Charisma. Otherworldly Patron, the Undead. Form of Dread, at first level you manifest an aspect of your patron's dreadful power. As a bonus action you can transform for 1 minute, you gain the following benefits. You gain temporary hit points equal to 1d10 plus your Warlock level. Uh, once during each of your turns, when you hit a creature with an attack, you can force it to make a Wisdom save, and if the saving throw fails, the target is frightened of you until the end of your next turn, you are immune to the Frightened Condition. You can transform a number of times equal to your Proficiency bonus. You regain all expended uses uh, when you finish a long rest. Allergy Vocations, you gain Forbidden Fragments of Knowledge, that imbue you with an abetting magical ability. Starting at second level, you gain two allergy vocations of your choice. When you gain certain warlock levels, you gain additional evocations of your choice, as shown as the in the evocations known column of the warlock table. At a level uh, prerequisite refers to your level in this class, so not total. Agonizing blast when you cast. Eldritch Blast, add your Charisma modifier to the damage that it deals. And Gift of the Ever-Living Ones. When you regain hit points, uh, while your familiar is within 100 feet of you, treat any dice rolled to determine the hit points you gain as having rolled their maximum value for you. At level 3, she gets a Packed Boon. Uh, your otherworldly patron bestows a gift upon you for your loyalty and service you gain one of the following features you ch uh, of your choice she picked pact of the chain which allows you to learn the find familiar spell and cast it as a ritual the spell does not count against your numbers of spell knowns when you cast the spell you can choose one of the normal forms uh, for finding your for find familiar or one of the following special forms imp pseudo dragon quasit or sprite we all know that she went imp. Additionally, when you take an attack action, you can forego one of your own attacks to allow your familiar to make an attack with its reaction. We are now going to move on to the theoretical fight, and we're going to start with the average damage per turn. But before we get started, I'm going to assume that Keela takes her elemental form, much like how I've assumed that Barbarians will be raging. However, Bo doesn't have access to key points, as it is a limited number of it, but she will be able to use her bonus action to attack with her unarmed strike. So, starting with Keyleth, Keyleth has an average damage per turn using Thorn Whip of 6 damage. This is outside of her elemental form because eventually she will lose it. Maybe. When in elemental form, she can make 2 slam attacks. This deals on aver average, if it hits both times, 26 damage per turn. Uh, Keyleth using Thorn Whip takes out Bo and Laudna in 15 turns. And using the elemental slam, it takes 4 turns to take both of them out as well. Moving on to Bo, Bo has an average damage per turn using unarmed strikes of 24. That's all three attacks. Bo, using her bow staff and the Maelstrom gloves, has an average damage of 26 if she hits twice per turn. And that's also including the unarmed strike. So, with that, using unarmed strike, she takes out Keyleth in 8.5 turns. Which means on the second half of that turn, she can turn around and start whacking Ladna. And she takes out Laudna in 4, using unarmed strikes. Bo, using her bow staff with the gloves, takes out Keyleth in 7.5 turns, and takes out Laudna in 3.5 turns. 
Lana, the average damage uh, from her using Eldritch Blast is 14 if she hits twice. And she takes out Keyleth in 14 turns. And she takes out Bow in 6 turns. So, with that, I think the results are pretty clear. We can all see that Keyleth is the one who takes them out the fastest. And is the one taking out the slowest. However, this is mostly due to her elemental form. Her elemental form takes out Bow and Lana before either of them can realistically take her out of the elemental form. Without Keyleth's elemental form... She has the lowest average damage using Thorn Whip, so the elemental form was almost necessary to even compete with the other two. And I did the math. If we didn't use her Wild Shape, it takes Bo four turns to take out Keyleth, and it takes Lana 4.5. So realistically, without elemental form, Bo wins this round. So if you want to give this round of theoretical fight to either Bo or Keyleth, I would be totally fine with that because realistically, either or is fair. But I felt like giving her the elemental form because it's effectively like rage for the barbarians, which we've used in the past. So I feel like that balanced it out. Also, I allowed uh, Beauregard to use a bonus action attack, which I didn't allow the barbarians to use in the past. Or well, mostly Grog because he's the only one that has that. But you know, without Wild Shape, Bo wins the theoretical. So that's fine up to you. However, like the other fights that we've done in the past, the theoretical doesn't account for magic and other abilities like key points and like stunning strike. I feel like that would be a huge uh, fight changer. So that being said, for my prediction, I don't think Bo and Ladna will be able to deal with Keyleth that fast. Not only is she a tank in elemental form, but she can heal as a bonus action. And even if they do manage to knock her out of her elemental form, she still has a full health pool from her regular state. And she has a bunch of spells left over and she's still very much dangerous. So I do believe that Keyleth will win the practical as well. To go even further, I think the prediction is going to be Lana will go down first. And then Bo will go down second, leaving Keyleth as the winner. I think Keyleth will lose her, her elemental form, but she'll still win using her magic. So it's time for the practical fight. The rules are much like the other fights that we've done before. 30 feet apart from each other and there will be no flanking rules. The enemy of my enemy is not my friend. It's still my enemy in this case. So, it'll be me and two other players this time. The third player who's been helping out recently is not available for this video. So, I'll have to be the one taking up the mantle of one of the two, or one of the three. And, uh, I won't be trying to get videos this time, as last time it did not work. I couldn't get the audio to sort of go away. I couldn't remove the audio for some reason. So, this time we're just going to do close-up pictures, and I'm going to take as many pictures as possible. And, um, yeah. No more, no more video issues for now until I figure something else out. So it'll be up close uh, cinematic pictures. So this way we won't put anybody at risk of being seen in the video or our voices being heard in the video because I couldn't get rid of the audio. So yeah. And I'll do my best to take notes because that was one of the issues that I had with being a player last time was note taking was a little hard. So I will do my job and we will slow the whole game down and I will get better notes. So with all that out of the way, it's time to roll initiative. One thing of note very quickly before we get to initiative is actually my third player was able to come and join us. So we had all three players. So I was able to take a bunch of notes. So anyway, initiative. Keyleth got 18. Bo got 9. And Ladna got 6. Round 1, Keyleth. Keyleth steps back 10 feet and then casts Flame uh, flame Sphere at 2nd level. Uh, back where she started. Then she wild shapes into her Earth Elemental form. Bo is up. She runs 50 feet behind Keyleth. She then attacks twice using unarmed strike, missing the first, hitting the second one for 10 damage. Keyleth then maintains her concentration on Flame Sphere. Bo then uses Flurry of Blows and misses both of them. Ladna is up. She runs 30 feet away from the other two and then casts Eldritch Blast on Keyleth, missing, uh, missing both. Uh, round two, Keyleth is up. Keyleth moves behind Bo. She then uses her Flame Sphere to ram Bo. But with evasion, Bo takes no damage from the flaming sphere. Keyleth then tries to slam Bo, missing. Uh, this allows Bo to use a ability known as Pretar Natural Counter. I think I'm saying that right, which is actually something that I forgot to mention earlier in all of her ability stuff breakdowns because it's actually fairly inconsistent. Uh, this class, the way the Cobalt Soul, it gone through many iterations, and depending on what source you read, D and D Beyond, Wiki Five E, or a handful of other things. They're different, and I happen to get one that didn't mention this ability, but this ability basically uh, allows you to, as a reaction, when an enemy misses, you're allowed to make an attack back. Bo does this, but she misses. 
Keyleth then slams Bo again, this time hitting for 9 damage. Bo is up. Bo makes two unarmed strikes against Keyleth, missing both attacks. She then flurry of blows, missing the first one, but she hits the second one, dealing 9 damage. Keyleth maintains concentration. Uh, when Bo ends her turn within 5 feet of the Flaming Sphere, she makes a dex save, uh, but because of evasion, she takes no damage still. Ladna is up again. Ladna moves 15 feet and brings out Pate, and then activates Form of Dread. Round 3. Keyleth, she uses her Flame Sphere to ram Bo again. Uh, this time Bo fails, taking 3 damage, even with evasion still helping her. Keyleth then slams Bo again, misses. Bo uses her reaction to counter strike again, but misses as well. And then Keyleth misses her second slam. A lot of missing happening. Bo is up. She moves behind Keyleth again. Uh, Bo then uses an unarmed strike, hitting this time for 8 damage. Keyleth keeps concentration. Bo swings again, dealing... Uh, seven more damage with the hit. Keyleth saves yet again. Flurry of Blows uh, hits again for nine more damage. Here, Keyleth loses concentration and Flame Sphere leaves the battlefield. And then Bo hits again with the last Flurry of Blows for seven more damage. Ladna is up. She moves forty. Uh, she moves Pate 40 feet diagonally and then she casts Hex on Keyleth. Uh, Ladna then moves her full movement up and misses two Eldritch Blasts on Keyleth. Uh, round 4, Keyleth uses her bonus action to expend a 5th level spell slot to heal 26 hit points. She then slams uh, Bo and misses the slam. And then she slams again, hitting for 10 more damage. Bo did not use her reaction this time. Uh, she then moves behind Bo. Bo is up. Bo moves around Keyleth. They are now doing a nice little tango dance here. Then Bo uses unarmed strike again, dealing 8 damage on the first hit. And then on the second hit, six more damage. She then Flurry of Blows, missing the first one, but lands the second one for eight damage. Ladna is up. Ladna moves Pate toward Keyleth and Bo, dashing to fully get there. Ladna then casts Fireball on Keyleth and Bo. Keyleth fails, but Bo succeeds. Keyleth takes uh, 28 damage. Bo takes none from evasion. Ladna then moves up 20 feet. Round five, Keyleth. Keyleth uses her bonus action to expend another 5th level spell slot for 29 more HP. She then slams Bo, missing again. Bo counters, hitting for eight, uh, 6 more damage. Keyleth then creates space between herself and Bo, because there is no more reaction to really worry about. However, on Bo's turn, Bo moves around Keyleth and starts swinging. She hits for 8 damage on the first attack and 11 on the second. She then flurry of blows uh, for 7 and 6 more damage, hitting all 4 attacks this turn. Uh, she still has five key points left. Ladna moves Pate around Bo. Uh, and then Ladna moves up 30 feet herself. Casting Elders Blast on Keyleth. Missing the first, hitting the second one for 13 damage with the Hex. Round 6, Keyleth heals again using a fi uh, fourth level spell slot for 21 HP. She then slams but misses Bo again for a counter strike from Bo for 11 more damage. Keyleth then misses the second slam. Keyleth then moves around Bo again. Bo moves behind Keyleth. Uh, she then misses her uh, both unarmed st strikes. Uh, she then Flurry of Blows hitting for 6 damage, missing the second uh, Flurry of Blows, only hitting one time this turn. Ladna then moves Pate around Bo again and casting Shock and, uh, shock and Grasp through her or through him onto Bo. However, this misses. Bo then uses her counter attack on Pate, dealing 9 damage, and Pate is still standing. Round 7. Keyleth is up, she slams Bo, missing, she tries again and hits for 11 damage this time. Keyleth then hits for 13 more HP using a lower level spell slot. Keyleth then moves behind Bo, the do -si do continues. Bo then moves behind Keyleth, the do -si do continues. Uh, Bo then crits an unarmed strike for 13 damage and she misses the second one. She then flurry of blows hitting for 9 on the first strike and it hits for uh, 9 more damage on the second strike. Ladna then moves Pate 40 feet away as he is almost dead. Keyleth misses her opportunity attack, and then Ladna fires a fireball on both Keyleth and Bo. Keyleth fails again, and then Bo saves. Keyleth takes 19 damage, losing her elemental form. Round 9, or sorry, round 8. Keyleth is up. She casts Blight on Bo. Uh, Bo fails and takes 25 damage. Keyleth then moves behind Bo again. Bo then moves around uh, Keyleth. Bo then hits Keyleth for 7 more damage on the first hit and 8 on the second one. Flurry of blows again 
for six more damage on the first, missing the second attack from Flurry of Blows. Lana is up. She moves up 45 feet, dashing. She then sends Pate 45 feet closer to the fight. Round nine. Keyleth moves behind Bo and casts Polymorph to become a T-Rex. Bo moves around the T-Rex and punches it uh, for seven damage. Keyleth unfortunately loses concentration on T-Rex uh, form already. Bo then moves up to Keyleth and crits for 14 damage. She then uses Flurry of Blows, hitting for eight more damage on the first and eight more on the second. Bo is just non-stop hitting. Lana moves up uh, within 60 feet of Bo and she uh, casts Wither and Bloom on Keyleth, uh, hitting both Keyleth and Bo. Uh, they both fail and take 8 damage. She then moves Pate behind Keyleth. Round 10. Keyleth casts Thunder Wave. Uh, Bo fails and Pate dies. Bo, however, goes down from this. Keyleth then steps over Bo to try to cr uh, close the distance between uh, Laudna and... Sorry, create distance between Laudna and herself. Bo then rolls a death save and saves. Lana then quicken spells Eldritch Blast, hitting Eldritch, uh, hitting Keyleth with the first, putting her down. This makes Laudna the winner. And there you have it. Laudna is the winner. A shocking turn of events. My prediction was Keyleth because her insane health pool, her resources to heal and everything. And when she even came out of her elemental form, like I said, she still had plenty of spells left to do shit with. She was able to polymorph into a T-Rex, which was kind of like her last ditch effort. And she lost it very quickly, unfortunately. So very unfortunate for that. But overall, I'm very shocked with this. I truly believed Keyleth would come out on top. And I truly believed Bo would be the second runner up or what uh, would be the runner up. And Lana would go down first. But the two of them, Bo and Keyleth, focused each other the entire time and sort of realized a bit too late that Ladna was kind of a bigger threat than they initially realized. So, overall, this was very fun and entertaining for me to watch because I got to watch it. And two, it was very interesting to see like how things can snowball if you let the ranged casters sit way out of bounds. She was forever out of combat, way out of the way of any of the spells that the other two have or any of like, the reach that the other two have. And she was able to just start picking them off from a distance. The only thing that I would change is if I were playing Keyleth or Bo, I would have started moving toward Laudna a bit sooner. Yes, I would have still had to contend with Keyleth or Bo, whoever I was running away from. But I feel like getting toward Laudna sooner would have helped them mass massively. Not to mention, immediately they started to move away from Laudna. I would have started moving toward Laudna a bit sooner. But, hey, those are things that I can see now in hindsight. So overall, very fun. This is going to be a fun video to edit, and I'm very excited to do so. And it's going to be a five hour long process as the other ones were. So I guess just to get started on that. With that all being said, thank you guys for, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys for whatever video I make next. Peace.